Now, this variant of the Boeing 747 was quite the failure. So much, in fact, that only one of them is flying around still. For Transavia Export Cargo Airline. Yes, everybody, in today's video, we're talking about the Boeing 747-300. A plane that I've never seen before, only in the flight simulator, because someone made an add-on for it. And chances are you have never seen the 747-300 either. Today, we're going to talk about why. I mean, let's be real. Over the course of 54 years, 1,574 747s were built. That is a lot of 747s, but only 81 of them, such a small amount, were the Boeing 747-300. See, whereas the original variants of the 747s were really successful, this 200, for example, almost 400 of them were built, and with the 747-400 being even more successful, over 7 hundred of them were built. It seems pretty off why the 747-300 falls off. I mean, it looks quite normal. In fact, I wouldn't be, be even be able to properly tell that this is a 747-300. Most people don't really even know about its existence. So let's talk about why and what happened. What went wrong with this airplane? See, imagine this. It's the 1970s and the OG 747-200 is out. Look at this beautiful plane. Everyone was excited to be flying on it. The magical upper deck that wasn't very big at this time. We had this spiral staircase that I actually walked up on when I slept in the 747. But of course, this plane was launched in 1971, and by the end of the 70s, this plane was already aging in a few aspects. Look at the cockpit, for example, which is more complicated than airliners today, because we don't only have two pilots sitting in the front, but we also have an engineering panel. This plane is a bit of an interesting one to start up if you're just by yourself. Yes, three pilots in the cockpit flying at all times is something unheard of today, and by the early 1980s, it was becoming clear that we'd only really need two pilots to fly properly because planes don't have to be as complicated. I mean, the Airbus A310 back then in 1982 was the first commercial passenger airliner designed specifically for a two-pilot cockpit. See, look how modern the systems are, even though the Airbus A310 was just a little bit over 10 years younger than the super complicated looking 747-200. This plane was becoming a bit inefficient as well. I mean, it carried a lot of passengers, but we've got four engines, we've got wings from a different time. They don't really flex a lot at all. So it was about time that Boeing did an upgrade to, once again, the 747-300. <sighs> and that's what Boeing did. In 1983, they launched this new 747-300, much improved. But the problem is that this plane didn't really fix any issues at all. As you can notably tell, this airplane is of course longer. It had an extended upper deck. That would finally mean that we could actually put passengers properly in there. This upper deck is seven meters longer than the 747-200 upper deck. That sounds great. More modern, bigger, 747. But the problem was that when you looked into the cockpit, it looked like this, because it was the very same. Yes, genuinely, by the standards of 1983, this was quite an outdated cockpit. I mean, let's be real. Only four years after this was launched in 1987, Airbus could already build cockpits that look like this. And not like that or uh, like, like that. I mean, it's pretty ridiculous. Compare this. I mean, this cockpit that came out fresh out of the factory one year after the 757 flew for the first time, which also had a dual piled operated cockpit that looked much more modern and was much better. Genuinely, the 747-300 was just a 747-200 plus <laughs> with a longer deck. Like, yes, they made a little bit of an aerodynamic improvement on the wing, which would make the plane point one Mach faster than the 200. That is literally such an insignificant <laughs> difference. Also, there weren't any engine upgrades or anything. This plane didn't really burn less fuel and the 747-200 in its original form was super fuel inefficient. And of course so, no one thought, oh, 
let's buy this airplane let's go ahead and maybe uh, take it for a spin and see how it flies this is once again the 747 300 model a weird thing is that it has a 747 400 cockpit um more on that later this add-on is just wrong probably they didn't bother designing a proper 747 300 cockpit here for the flight sim so it's funny how this has got like a actually like i don't know they, they actually managed to fix all the issues that the 747 300 had and that is generally just the cockpit let's try to take off here yes the aerodynamic performance is amazing let's go take off that was a minor tail strike. Ah, oh, and I love the 747. It's just interesting to see it fly, especially here with these old 747-200 wings where you're like, how does this thing even lift off? And there we go, landing gear up. Yeah, this plane, I don't, I actually, I don't even know what Boeing was really thinking of this. Obviously, they didn't really spend a lot of money in developing the plane because it was basically the same as the old one. I think the biggest issue is that just two years after the 747-300 was delivered, Boeing already announced the 747-400, which obviously had all the improvements the 747 needed. New wings, new engine, new everything. While retaining the bigger upper deck, it also had, like, actually this cockpit that we we see right here which actually makes sense for the time look two piled operation look at the very good overhead panel that isn't completely ass generally the announcement situation of boeing back then was kind of like apple if they were to announce the iphone 17 in one year and then half a year later they bring out the 17s that had a slightly better camera while genuinely being the same as the iphone 17 and then half a year later they come up with the iphone 18 we're just completely just everything better and everything fixed like who would buy the 17s who would buy the 747 300 i don't know but this plane flies uh this plane flies well and it hasn't flown for passengers in 10 years by the way now uh let's say uh, let's see what this plane can do you know what this is the 747 300 was just a stretched version of the 200 with the same engines practically i expect this plane to be quite a bad performer this is like building a bigger car but using the same engine maybe okay that's a very far stretch definitely not part of the reason why this airplane was only built of, like 80 times let's go full power here in the weirdly mixed up variant of the 747 Four, three hundred. That doesn't make any sense. Come on, you can do it. Let's uh, let's try it. Yes, there we go. Look at that. We can uh, take off from a one thousand meter long runway. Barely. That hasn't really worked. Let's go to try to land it. This is a thousand meter long runway. And you know what? Maybe we can try to land it smoothly. I mean, something that I like about these. I mean, look at this. We can bring out the flaps to like what forty degrees on this. This is a pretty insane angle of flaps. Look at the tilt landing here. We can maybe even do a smooth landing and still stop. So let's go ahead and try if we can see if we can pull it off. Come on. 50, 40, 30, 20, 10. Yes. No. No. Oh. Oh God. That was not good. I, all right. Let's see. Extreme stopping performance test. Yes. Full power to reverse thrust. Put all the for everything. Yes, get this airplane to a halt. That, oh, wow, this stops really quickly. That's pretty insane. Like, I know our brakes are on fire, but we didn't even, like, use all the runway to brake. Wow. You know what? This makes me think the flight model isn't very trustable. I mean, lo look at the cockpit. It's not, doesn't even make sense. Oh, my God. This is going to be an extremely hard landing. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's 747. You can do it. You can do it. You can do it. You can do it. You can't. It, it, uh, it's probably the dumbest experiment ever okay you know what this might be the real reason why the 747 300 failed um couldn't land on the shortest runway in the world mm. somebody what a shame this airplane failed i genuinely don't really know why boeing bothered to make it in the first place it didn't really have a place <laughs> so uh what a poor thing the 747 300 so thank you guys so much for watching this video and i'll see you guys tomorrow as always good night and a special thanks goes out to my members my supporters <laughs> guns killer r27 james deram that dude anime gods of gaming derek insider plane nishititsu finer professional jamal ryland williams and new the york you've got beautiful names